Mark Rogers TV talking to Miami football with Cam Underwood from State of the U and uh, Mark Richt and his staff coming off a successful 2017 National Signing Day back on the recruiting trail. It never stops. And of course, before that 17 class is signed, there's already a ton of work being put in on the 18 class. And that continues uh, both last weekend and this weekend with a number of visits, Cam. Uh, so let's look back to last weekend. What do you have for us in regards to what happened on campus? Yeah, so, you know, it's always good to be back. And like uh, the mantra is, ABC, always be recruiting. And this staff is definitely doing that. Uh, we had the first junior day of the 2018 cycle. It's called a junior day because the majority of the players who come are going to be current juniors, rising seniors for the next recruiting class. But there were other underclassmen. Um, 2019, 2020 kids, those are current sophomores and freshmen who are on campus. And there was just, um, a, it was just packed with a ton of players. There were upwards of 40 four-star and five-star guys who were on campus um, last weekend. So you had guys like James Cook, the brother of Dalvin Cook, a five-star running back recruit, uh, Chris Curry, who's Najee Davenport's cousin, if you remember him from Miami Hurricanes lore, uh, Four-star wide receivers were on campus. Mark Pope um, was there. Um, you know, Elijah Moore from St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, a bunch of other guys. I can keep going. I'm going down the list on the website for the article that I wrote. Four-star defensive ends, three-star defensive ends, uh, linebackers, uh, defensive backs. There was just a bunch of guys on campus, and it was really good to get all these kind of local guys, these top guys on campus, because then they can build a connection with the coaching staff. So, um if you're wondering what a junior day is, that's really just kind of a meet and greet. There, it was not a camp setting, so they were not competing. Um, but they got to meet with the coaching staff. They got to meet some of the current players who were there. Uh, a lot of the 2017 signees were there because almost half of our class were early enrollees, so they were around. Uh, got to meet with the coaching staff and see some things, go over the Schwartz Center, the Athletic Center, uh, see a bunch of stuff over there. Also had academic presentations and academic advisors there because, you know, uh, academics matter. And this is a time when coaches and parents were there with students also. Uh, so the parents got to see, okay, you know, the University of Miami is not suntan you. And I look, I, I'm wearing the shirt and I went there and I know that that was the reputation and everything. But even from the time that I went there in the 2000s till now, this is a top 50 institution, in, uh, according to U.S. News and World Report, the highest rated academic institution in the state of Florida. And that is something that is a selling point to some degree to these uh, parents and coaches, because while we're trying to get the football back also, this is not a four-year decision. This is a 40-year decision with the network of people and things like that. Um, and also, just as an, an aside, as I'm talking about it, the University of Miami is the only program, I think, at this point, uh, or was the first program, at least, that any uh, letterman who was there on scholarship, if they leave, uh, like to go to the NFL earlier, things like that, they have the ability to go back free of charge and finish their degree at any time. As coming back up and where a lot of professional players come back and then they do uh, that kind of thing there. So Terrell Suggs, I know, is somebody who was doing that. Uh, who else did I see? He played linebacker. Uh, Takeo Spikes, um, he did his MBA uh, at the University of Miami. So there's a lot going on. So you had the football and the academic and the life side. So you get all those things coming together and get to experience that at a junior day. Um, there was some positive movement on a couple of recruits. Uh, well, hopefully on more than just a couple, but specifically uh, two recruits uh, committed last weekend. Excuse me while I silence my phone there um, <laughs> so it doesn't ring. But uh, two recruits committed to the 2018 class. Both of them are teammates at Miami Carroll City High School. That is a school that has given Miami a bunch of players in the past of the program, Santana Moss. Sonoris Moss, uh, the infamous Willie Williams, uh, Alan Hearns, uh, I'm probably missing somebody else who went to Carroll City, Treyon Gray, who's on the team right now. Um, so from Carroll City, uh, three-star safety, Randy Russell committed. He's a, um, a hard hitter. He's about 5'11", 180 pounds. Um, and if you watch his highlights, he will hit you hard coming across the middle. Um, and so he was somebody who was thought to be leaning heavily to Florida uh, prior to this visit. But he and his teammate, and now Miami commit Cameron Davis, a four-star running back, had talked heavily about playing together in college. And after uh, Davis decommitted from Oregon State, Miami was looking to bring him in in this class to be the complimentary running back to five-star Lorenzo Lingard. And Davis has a different build and a different game than Lingard, so their styles mesh well together because what one does well, the other does not, and then vice versa. So... 
uh, the other player is that Cameron Davis who committed also great name Cameron. <laughs> so uh, he committed to the University of Miami with uh, him and Russell. That gives us 11 commitments right now in the 2018 class. Have the number three overall class in America um, in terms of recruiting right now. Uh, tons of momentum. So hopefully we're able to build on that. There are a couple of guys who are in this class who probably will not be um, in this class just because, you know, there's turnover and things like that. So um, Artie Burns' younger brother, Thomas Burns, is a track guy. He's not really a football player in my estimation. Uh, many people think that he'll probably beat at Miami on a uh, track scholarship and maybe play football down the road. But there's kind of restrictions around just putting somebody on a track scholarship and playing them full time in football. Uh, and then also Jalen Patterson out of North Marion uh, High School. Um, he probably will not be in this class either as Miami looks to get a little bit higher tier caliber um, recruits at cornerback in this class, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Miami has uh, some great momentum. Last week was a packed visit weekend, uh, and then we have it this weekend as well. Yeah, so Dave is a top 15 running back nationally. Russell, top 40 safety. You mentioned Burns. We'll see what his status is, but a top 60 cornerback. Uh, I think you hit on something extremely important in regards to the academic cell, to the family in general, and the stereotype because of social media recently and because of the stereotype that goes back to generations that football players going to places like Miami of that caliber of football are there for the football, football period. Uh, that that's uh, completely wrong. And sure, there are situations where the kid is just focused on football and getting to the next level. And that's all there is to it. But those those are more rare than what uh, I think is depicted to be and the academic institution and the other activities that can be offered to the student and, and the vibe and obviously the 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 support that uh, that student can be given in four, three to four years is extremely important. You're going to be at a, a specific location for three or four years. Maybe your career isn't as outstanding as you want it to be, and you're going to go pro in something other than sports. And, you know, we're going to give you the academic, uh, the knowledge to do that uh, properly.